Listen. Hello? Bonjour. <gasps> Danielle Boyer was thrilled. It had worked. The word bouju didn't come from a person. The voice had come from a small dome-shaped robot on Danielle's shoulder. A robot she had designed and built herself. When Danielle spoke in English, the robot spoke back to her in Anishinaabemowin, the native language of Ojibwe people. Ojibwe people are an indigenous tribe from the northern United States and southern parts of Canada. It felt magical to hear Anishinaabemowin come out of the little brown robot. And it didn't even sound robotic. That was intentional. Danielle had spent months collecting recordings of people of all ages saying lots of different words in their Ojibwe language. Many indigenous kids had never heard their native language spoken aloud especially in a voice that sounded like their own. Danielle designed these robots to change that. Now, sitting here and talking with her Scobot, all the research, all the recordings, all the coding and the designing, all of it was worth it. To preserve her community's language and to show people everywhere that Native girls belong in tech. I'm Robin Regalado, and this is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, a fairy tale podcast about the real life rebel women who inspire us. On this episode, Danielle Boyer, Ojibwe scientist, advocate, and inventor. Danielle Boyer is a proud member of the Sioux St. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. She grew up in Michigan. Ever since she was a little kid, Danielle had been fascinated by understanding how things work. She was homeschooled and encouraged to follow her curiosity. And she did. If she could take something apart, she would. More than that, she liked showing other people how those things worked, explaining it to them, teaching them. Danielle's teaching career started earlier than most. When she was only 10 years old, she volunteered to teach a group of kindergartners in her hometown. For a whole semester, she used puppets to teach zoology or the science of animals. She taught things like where different animals live and what they like to eat. She brought the kindergartners snacks like oats and carrots so the kids could graze and chomp like the animals they were learning about. Then one day, when Danielle was in middle school, her little sister asked her about the science behind robots. Danielle didn't know much about robots, but she dove right in. She found an educational robot assembly kit that would be perfect, but it cost $500. She and her family couldn't afford to pay so much for one kit. So Danielle got creative. She watched videos on YouTube skimmed books on how to wire things with electricity, and studied the listings of different robot kits online to figure out what she could cook up herself. Being a homeschool student when she was younger had made her especially good at teaching herself. Still, she knew she could only get so far on her own. To learn as much as she wanted, she'd need more resources, people to collaborate with, and someone to teach her. So when it was time for high school, she found a public school that had a robotics team. They got to build actual robots and compete against other teams. She and her family saved up for a long time. Joining the team was expensive, but finally they did it. Danielle was so excited. Soon she'd have the one thing she couldn't give herself, teammates. When Danielle arrived for her first meeting of the high school robotics team, she was fired up and ready to go. She was nervous to be the new kid at school, but she'd be around the other kids who loved robots as much as she did. She imagined making friends with the other girls. But when she walked in, the room was full of boys. She was one of the only girls there and the only native person. 
She tried to be optimistic. But as the weeks went on, Danielle still didn't feel welcome or like one of the team. The boys bullied her and made her feel unsafe. She tried her best to power through for the robots, the learning. In spite of her efforts, it didn't get better. Danielle was disappointed and disillusioned. She thought this was her chance to connect with other kids like her, a chance to grow her own skills. Instead, she felt boxed out, like science and robotics weren't meant for her. But she hadn't let a lack of resources get in her way. Why would this obstacle be any different? Danielle dug in her heels and stayed on the team. Danielle had overcome so much to get to where she was now, teaching herself, saving money, building robots, teaching others. Danielle remembered when her sister had first wanted to get into robotics. Her family couldn't afford the cost of the robotics kit, and she knew that plenty of other indigenous families were in the same position. She also remembered her early experience teaching kindergartners. She taught them animal science and hadn't needed any fancy equipment to do it. What if something like that were the answer to getting more girls and Native kids involved in robotics? And what if her robotics team could help? Danielle kept thinking, then started experimenting with her robotics team. Danielle asked herself questions like an engineer would. What materials could she use that would cost less? Which ones wouldn't cause harm to the environment? How could she design it to have fewer parts? She and the team built all kinds of models and finally arrived at one that worked. She'd used recycled plastic in a design that only required four components made by a 3D printer. Danielle kept going until she'd invented a whole new kind of robot. She called it Edgar. It stood for every kid gets a robot. Each Edgar had three large wheels, and a small platform connecting them. She designed a small robotic car. Instead of $500 per robot, hers cost less than $20 to make. Danielle and her team were so proud of this prototype. They couldn't wait to share it with the world. When Danielle was 17 years old, she finally got to talk about it at a robotics competition in Detroit. She even skipped prom to do it. And it was worth it. Bright lights, the clanging of metal, the voices of hundreds of kids talking about robotics. She could hardly believe it. Plus, she met a woman who actually worked for the software company Danielle used to build robots. Her new connection encouraged her to follow her dream. How could she improve the design of Edgar? The other robot kit hadn't just been expensive. It required internet access to get the robot to work. Danielle knew that many indigenous families live in areas that don't have access to steady internet. Even if those kids saved up the money to buy the expensive robot kit, they wouldn't be able to use it. So Danielle found a way to make sure her robot would be able to function whether it had internet or not. Her robot cost less than $20 to make, but Danielle wanted to go one step further. She decided to give each of the Edgars away for free. For that, she had to find businesses and organizations that were willing to cover the cost. And once she did, the Edgars were a hit. Kids loved it, and so did teachers. Schools around her hometown started requesting Edgars for their classrooms. She had to 3D print each one with recycled plastic, and she couldn't make them fast enough. It seemed like everyone wanted an Edgar, but she was just one person. Danielle knew her next step had to be building something bigger than herself where people could work together toward improving access and representation in science, technology, engineering, art, and math, also known as STEAM. So when she was only 18 years old, Danielle founded her own nonprofit dedicated to bringing awareness to, and improving, the racial and gender diversity within STEAM fields. She called it 
the steam connection. Once the steam connection was off the ground, Danielle got back to inventing. Her next robot would tackle another issue she noticed within her indigenous community, the loss of native languages. Danielle knew the value of her own native language, that of the Ojibwe people, called Anishinaabemowin. There are words in that language that just don't exist in English, words for particular plants or animals that hold meaning and give life to Ojibwe culture. Danielle also knew that fewer and fewer people were learning how to speak Anishinaabemowin. The language was dying. And it wasn't just Anishinaabemowin. More than 100 native languages across the United States were becoming lost to time. Too few people knew how to speak them. And opportunities to learn were few and far between. Danielle wanted to design something to help. She just didn't know what. Yet. So, she got to work. She teamed up with a native language scholar, Joshua D. Allison Burbank. They talked about what it takes to learn a language. They both knew a robot could never replace teachers or elders who spoke the language. But she wanted to figure out what role a robot could play if a teacher wasn't around. After lots of conversations and lots of trial and error, Danielle and her collaborators landed on a design and a name. They wanted the name to be something that felt familiar in Native communities, something to make the little robot more approachable. They called it the Scobot. For the way people on reservations often say, let's go then, or Skoden. And she wanted Ojibwe people to see themselves in the little robot too. She used a 3D printer to make each part. For one version of the Scobot, she gave the robot brown color to mimic the bark of birch trees. She gave it small ears, like a makwa or bear. And on the front of the small dome, she put a woodland flower. She and her collaborators recorded hundreds of snippets of different languages, of elders or children saying things like hello and thank you in their native languages. In Anishinaabemowin, that sounded like buju and miigwech. They put all those recordings inside the robot and programmed it to respond to a prompt in English with the right Anishinaabemowin translation. And true to its name, Scobot could go with you. Danielle designed it so that the little robot could snap onto a strap on your shoulder. That way, Danielle thought, the learning can happen wherever you are, beyond the classroom. Kids would still need their elders, their teachers, to give them the fundamentals of their language. But now, they could have a toy that would not only help them practice speaking, but also make that practice fun. Today, Danielle has been recognized by L'Oreal, People Magazine, MIT, Teen Vogue, and more for her incredible work making the world of science and engineering more welcoming and accessible for Native kids and girls. But the most important recognition for her is when a young girl interested in STEAM sees herself in Danielle. If Danielle could have seen someone that looked like her inventing, designing, and building new robots, she might have felt more comfortable on her robotics team. If she could ease even one girl's entry into STEAM, keep one person from feeling like an outsider, then all her work would be worth it. But she has done so much more. Danielle and the STEAM Connection have sent more than 20,000 Edgar robots and hundreds of Scobots to kids all over the country. And more than one million kids have seen Native girls as leaders in their educational materials. Danielle has removed so many obstacles for Native kids to start learning about robotics and helped make clear that Indigenous inventors have a place not just in the present and the past, but a vital place in our future. Danielle has never come across a problem that she felt was too big for her to solve. That mindset, her incredible work ethic, and her commitment to creativity have enabled her to help thousands of kids get a shot at trying robotics. Whatever hurdle Danielle has faced, she's been able to find a way for her knowledge, her experience, and her ideas to be a part of a solution that helps other people. 
there's always more than one way to solve a problem. And it's always important to hear from different perspectives on what positive change can look like. Whether you enjoy teaching children younger than you about amazing animals or designing and programming cool robots, you too can use your talents to help others. And you might just have some fun along the way. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series, Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This episode was narrated by me, Robin Regalado. It was produced by Rebecca Chasson and directed by Ashton Carter with sound design and mixing by Erica Huang. The story was written by Rebecca Chasson and edited by Haley Dapkis. Ariana Griffiths was our intern. Fact-checking by Danielle Roth. Our executive producers were Angelica Temple and Jess Wolf. Original theme music was composed and performed by Elettra Barjaki. A special thanks to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Until next time, stay Rebel. Rebel.